Good evening, and welcome to Direct Impact Broadcasting, the station of growth and transformation. Affiliate of Creative Broadcasting presents Leadership Tidbits with Coach T. Wilson, with your host, Taiwana Wilson, as she welcomes her guest to the studio. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Leadership Tidbits with Coach T. Wilson. I am your host, Tywana Wilson. A little bit about myself. I am your award-winning leadership maven, medical laboratory scientist by background, best-selling author, owner and chief leadership coach at Trendy Elite Coaching and Consulting Services, executive director with the John Maxwell team, Maxwell Disc Certified Consultant, Send Out Card Referral Partner, and co-owner of Direct Impact Broadcasting Radio Station. Before we bring on my special guest, I do want to share a few announcements. The authors of the Girlfriend Code Sorority Edition are now on tour. Our first stop is in the DMV on July 27th at the Courtyard Marriott in Alexandria, Virginia. The event is free and registration can be done on Eventbrite. You do not have to be a member of a sorority to understand or relate to any of the stories in the book. They're for girlfriends everywhere. All of the leadership assessments are on sale and available for Trendy Elite Coaching and Consulting at www.trendyelitellc.com. So take advantage of those uh, leadership assessments while they're on sale. And we are also booking show guests through the end of the year. So if you have an interest of being among the trailblazers that we've had thus far and being on this show, please go on and apply at bit.ly forward slash LT guest. Also, thank you to my media mentors, Ms. Ashley Little and Ms. Kimberly McLemore of Talk Radio and TV Network, LLP. Today's special guest, Ms. Lisa Colker. Lisa Coker is the CEO of Infinite Management Solutions, LLC, a woman veteran-owned certified small business which primarily partners with middle market and large organizations in both private and public sectors in the Midwestern region. Coker is a proud United States Air Force veteran. She has earned a reputation as a trusted partner, dynamic team facilitator, outstanding problem solver, and accomplished professional. She helps C-suite executives develop their strategic plans and streamline operational processes. Coker is a certified Lean Six Sigma Continuous Process Improvement Black Belt Practitioner and often consulted for her innovative business improvement strategies and solutions resulting in reduced operational costs and improved mission effectiveness. In addition to a bachelor's degree, in business administration, Coker also holds a master's degree in organizational change management. She has additionally completed pro professional executive programs at University of Tennessee, University of Dayton, and Air University. Coker's passion, professionalism, and poise continue to prepare her forward, propel her forward as a recognized expert and leader in her field. In 2017, Coker had the distinct honor of leading a comprehensive strategic planning project for the Air Force Material Command's AFMC four-star general commander. The commander manages an $80 billion annual budget and employs over 27,000 people. Coker's outstanding team leadership skills enable the general and her 120-member leadership team to establish a new vision statement and multiple strategic goals and objectives. In 2018, the Dayton Business Journal recognized Coker as one of the region's brightest young professionals and named her a 40 Under 40 Award winner. Coker holds memberships to the National Association of Professional Women, Veteran Women Igniting the Spirit of Entrepreneurship, Armed Forces Communication and Electronics Association, Women in Business Network, Women in Defense, and Rotary Club of Dayton. In her spare time, Lisa Coker enjoys running and traveling with her husband and three children. Good evening, good evening, Lisa. How are you doing? I am doing fantastic, Coach T. Thank you for having me. I look forward to spending the next hour with you and your listeners, and I'm excited to be here. 
Thanks for having me. Anytime. I am excited to have you here and excited to hear all about your journey. So let's just jump right in. So, Lisa, can you tell the listeners about your leadership journey and how did you get to where you are today? So, absolutely. So, as you heard, I am an Air Force vet, and Coach T, you already know that. One thing to point out, I'm going to figure out how to shorten my bio just a little bit. But anyway, that's <laughs> on a more serious note. So you know, I'm an Air Force veteran, um, served my country for 20 years, did 12 years active duty, finished out my last eight years as a civil servant. And so a lot of my business acumen was developed during that 20-year span while I served in the Air Force. Like you mentioned, I earned both degrees while I was on active duty. Thanks to the United States Air Force, it was all tuition free, right? It was 100% paid by the United States Air Force. So I'm forever grateful for the opportunities that it's provided. And then, um, so I would say with all of that time spent in the United States Air Force and preparing, I would say it's just basically preparation has meant opportunity. And so that's where Infinite Management Solutions has come about. So early on, just to kind of backtrack a little bit, early on I served in the Air Force as a human resources professional. And so a lot of those duties, if you have listeners that deal with human resources, you kind of get exposed to a lot of different things and a lot of different people from diverse backgrounds and ranks Mm -hmm. and things of that sort. So I would say that was the first opportunity um, to really expand or, you know, kind of spread my wings. So um, did that. For 12 years, and then I got a little knock on the door or a tap on the shoulder, and my husband, who was also a veteran, kind of came to me and said, hey, Lisa, Dayton, Ohio is kind of a cool a cool place. We can raise a family. Would you consider, you know, separating from the Air Force, meaning you take off your blue suit, your, your warrior suit, and would you consider going in as a civil servant? And so after a long thought, <laughs> right, sleepless nights. <laughs> <laughs> and said, okay, husband, I think we're on to something. And so that's how I left the military, but having still was able, you know, being fortunate enough to stay on Wright Pat as a civil servant. And so Wright Pat is an Air Force base in Dayton, Ohio, for the listeners who aren't too familiar with Dayton, Ohio. And so did that as a civil servant, went on to do a lot of Lean Six Sigma and organizational management and just kind of took those challenges and opportunities as they came. And so never really saying no to challenges, additional duty projects, leadership opportunities, even though it was outside of my job description, Mm -hmm. I still took those challenges and opportunities on. And so every time I grew and grew and grew, my toolbox got bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's what I would highly recommend to to our listeners take on those opportunities as they come those special projects wow that's yes. good advice that's very good mm-hmm. and for the listeners who don't know right pat is a very big deal even though i grew up in dayton sometimes you don't realize <laughs> the gym that you have but right pat is actually the largest single site employer in the state of ohio it's a pretty large military base and it's it's really like its own city and so at least we kind of said it a little bit but just to give you context (laughs) that's i mean that's a pretty big deal right pat is is known for a lot of things so that's awesome that you all even had the opportunity to come to dayton uh, and be out at right pat (laughs) that's that is truly it has truly been a blessing you are so right coach t absolutely Lisa, leaders come from all walks of life and have all different skills and strengths, and I'm sure you saw that being in the military, being stationed at at different bases. What skills and strengths do you possess that you think have been the most important on your leadership journey, whether it was in the military or the entrepreneur space? Or just the entrepreneur space. So I would have to say that some of the strengths, some of the main strengths that I know that I have One is I'm an extremely excellent listener. So when we talk about like active listening Mm -hmm. and really listening like with with all intent, and so I'm I'm watching the person who's talking to me. I'm listening. I'm listening into the different pitch of the voice, the tone of the voice. So I would say I've always I've been blessed with that because I've 
I've learned even through the entrepreneurial journey that not everyone has that. So I've I've come to call that a gift. It's just my ears just key in. If someone's talking, I'm listening, and, and I'm mm-hmm. fully engaged in that conversation. So with that, being an excellent leader, I'm able to process what's going on, whether it's being said, and sometimes it's what's not being said in a conversation that you have to key in on. So I would say that skill set has, has proved to be invaluable. Like it, is, it, has, it has served me well. I also would say this overall communication, understanding that, you know, you, you provide feedback, you provide communication, but what's the feedback? If you don't get the feedback, and this is even in my, even in my company, right? So this is, this is mm-hmm. funny. Because, I'm such, because I listen really well and I appreciate communication, I also appreciate the feedback. So I need to know that you received what I sent you. Right, because in this mm-hmm. day and age, people are extremely busy. Right, we're extremely busy. We're going a hundred miles per hour. So if I send something or if I call, just acknowledge, "Hey, got it, working it." Right, because we're on right. to the next thing. So that kind of feedback, I send something, you send something back. Right, mm-hmm. just to kind of close the loop. So that communication has proved me well. Problem solving. So with that Lean Six Sigma Black Belt certification. That is problem solving at the 10th degree, right? So it's looking at data, figuring out what the data says, getting to the root cause, fixing the root cause and not the symptoms. And I know you can appreciate that as a scientist. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Absolutely. (laughs) So so with that certification, you're, you're solving the true no kidding problem. We're not touching symptoms. We're not fixing symptoms. Let's get to the nitty gritty. You know, what are we improving here? And let's measure it. Let's watch it to make sure that we actually fix what we thought was going to work, um, what we thought the issue was going to be. So those, those two things, the last thing I would say, and I think it deals, it's a result of me listening so intently is I never forget a name. Right, I'm like I need to build an app or something because I know I can mm-hmm. make millions and millions of dollars off of this. But I never forget a name. If I meet you once, I know where I met you. It could be in the restroom at the Schuster Center, which is a huge <laughs> like auditorium hall, right? A huge theater <laughs> in the city of Dayton. I would know that I you had on a green sparkly dress and your shoes had feathers on them, right? And when I meet people and I'm able to see them in a different space and I'm like, hi, Taiwana, we met, you know, this, that, and other. You had mm-hmm. on a red blazer and black shoes and you're at Delta and, you know, those types of things. <laughs> people are like, whoa, like, have you been stalking me or are you really just, you know, you really just know me that well? Or, or I made that much of an impression on you. And that's because I'm fully engaged when I meet someone. Like, I am, I am, I am stuck on that person. So whether it's anywhere, if it's a restroom, parking lot, anything like that. So that has served me really well because I never know who I meet. It could be the general of an, of an organization. It could be a CEO of an organization that I would have never known. I just knew they had on a green dress and feather shoes, right? Mm-hmm. So that, that has served me well. And just building really great relationships and partnerships. So those three or four things have, have really served me well. They served me well throughout my military career, and they're serving me really, I mean, the business is really growing. We're really taking off, and I would say those same strengths and gifts have contributed to that. Yeah, you definitely need to create an app if you remember <laughs> every name. Now, I think my memory is okay, but sometimes I, I remember the face. But the right. name may escape me. <laughs> yes. Yes. I remember. Yes. If, if we actually shake hands, right, we shake hands. Hi, I'm Tyler. Mm-hmm. Hi, I'm Lisa. Yep. I'll meet you about five years later and say, hey, I remember you. And they're like, where? When? So, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. That's definitely a gift. I actually have an aunt like that. She can remember dates like no other. I mean, she remembers stuff from like 20 years ago and remember the date. So, that's a gift right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yep. That's me. First date. I know all of them. Aunt, aunt. Yes. That's me. <laughs> 
So that is that yeah. is a, a great point. So what you having a background in HR and then moving into the 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 Six Sigma and the lean processes, how do you kind of merge the two? Because, it, you know, sometimes in HR, you're dealing more with the people. With your lean processes, you're dealing more with the processes, more technical. How do you blend the two? And what I mean that mean by that is more so language. Because sometimes I work with lean Six Sigma practitioners, <laughs> and they're so far on the, on the technical side. It's like, no, okay, now, is that what I meant? <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> so how do you blend that? Because you're a people person, and, and, and so just want you to share with the audience who may be sitting in Lean Six Sigma sessions like me, and their person is far off in the technical space. How do you blend <laughs> that? <laughs> right. So, so I would say that because I do have that human resources background, and then my master's is in organizational and change management. So organizational is any group of people, right, that's coming together mm-hmm. to for one purpose, for a goal, to achieve a goal, right? Mm-hmm. And so you do need the technical piece, but if you don't have the people skills to rally the troops, per se, right, or inspire right. them to, to move, then all we have is data, and we have a problem right. still facing us, right? And so right. if if I would say that's one of my strengths as well, just from a career standpoint, from where my business is right now, I would say that's why people come to IMS. IMS is the name of the business. We call it IMS because Infinite Management Solutions is a mouthful, right? And so mm-hmm. people come to us because we have the technical skills but we also have the people skills. And so we know how to talk to people. We know how to inspire people. We understand the struggles and the challenges of change. We know that. We're human, right? And we don't act like that change is easy. But we do know that we can get through it, right? And so with the right right tools and techniques, we get them through through it. So that's kind of our niche. I mean, we're really gifted, and we just have that, as a company. So as the owner, I have it. And even as my team, we're growing a a team. We have a team of eight people about to grow to 10 within the next two months. And so another thing that I like, a tool that I've learned to appreciate is the Strengths Finders book and the assessment. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of my team members have the relatable strengths which means I can go into a group, into any organization per se, right, and relate to that team of people. So whether it's scientists, physicians, automotive industry, right? So not only is Lean Six Sigma agnostic, but so are we because we're people and we can relate to the different types of people. And so it's just, it's just really, I mean, it's it's a blessing, honestly. I I, I try to explain it. Again, it's preparation, met opportunity, and mm-hmm. boom, right? Here right. We are. That's exactly it. Wow. Awesome. Did that answer your question from a technical it, piece? Because it, it did. It did because it, it helps, okay. like I said, you know, being in, in meetings and, you know, having work with some lean Six Sigma practitioners before they're so far on the technical piece on the that data it's like, well, piece. how it, on the data? It's like, how is yes. this relatable? What, yes. are, what exactly are you wanting me to do? <laughs> Correct. And what am I going to be faced with when I take this back to my team that we're about to do this? <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Right. Ab- absolutely. Right. So we bring both both um, elements, both components to it. So we have the people skills but we also have the technical skills. And we're able to pull out whichever tool we need to, depending on what group of people we're working with and what problem we're trying to solve. Got it. I know know in your business, Infinite Management Solutions, IMS, you help mid and large companies develop their strategic plans and streamline their operational processes, and you are growing, which is amazing, Can you tell us a little bit about it? And you talked a little bit about it already, about why this kind of work is important and why is it important to leadership? Absolutely. And so I literally just had a a meeting with a team of women in manufacturing. And so I'm extremely passionate 
about strategic planning because I've seen that it works, right? I've been a witness. Not only have I helped facilitate strategic plans, but I've helped execute the strategic plan, and I've even developed one in my own company, so Infinite Management Solutions. So when I tell you one of the young ladies in the briefing today said, so you have really drank the Kool-Aid. Absolutely, I've drank the Kool-Aid. It's sweet. It's really good. It's chilled. Like I can tell you, it really works, right? So the strategic Mm -hmm. planning is basically a roadmap to success. Day-to-day as leaders, we are extremely busy. And so especially as a CEO or senior leader in your organization, you're running a bunch, you know, a team of people. You're doing good to just firefight, to just get day-to-day operations done, right? So strategic planning gets you that time. It's time away from the firefighting. It's time away from the day-to-day ops. And it gives you time, you and your leadership team, to just take a break and come together and say, where do we want to be in the next three to five years? And it's really taking a break. It's like turning cell phones off. We're going to just take this downtime, do a quick, you know, an off-site. It could be four hours, eight hours, two days, depending on what's required, right? And we're going to devote our time, all of our time, our thoughts, our energies into what do we want to look like? Right, and you put it down right. on paper. This, and then you start pen to paper. Pen to paper is critical, right? That's that's throughout the entire session. If I don't repeat it anymore, write the vision, make it plain, right? So you write it right. down, and you're saying you and your leadership team are coming together and saying this is what we're going to look like in the next three years. It goes from this is what we want to look like to this is what we're going to look like in three years, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's a roadmap to success. If you take the time up front and develop it, it'll save you so much heartache and time on the back end. So so the roadmap to success is critical. Strategic plans, so strategic plans also allow you to figure out how will you align your team, right? If I know where I'm headed, then I'm going to tell the rest of the team we're headed north. If I never, as the leader, say we're headed north, I'm going to have some of my team going west, some are going to go east, some are going to go south. Maybe a couple of us will go north, but just imagine if all of us were aligned and headed in the same direction. How much faster could we get to where we're going if everybody's mind is on the same direction? We're headed here. Let's take it. Let's take that hill. So that that kind of, if you think about, the strategic plan, and you want to put a lot of action behind your strategic plan. I know when I talk to leaders, they say, oh, are we just going to put this on the shelf, right? Are we just going to put the strategic plan in a binder and never look at it again? Sure, I'll do this Mm -hmm. exercise drill. When you put massive action to anything, you'll see results. So just imagine putting massive action to a strategic vision or a strategic goal you'll see it happen. And a lot of times, in my experience, you'll see it happen sooner than what you put down on paper. So that's my little, that's my Kool-Aid, drink the Kool-Aid of strategic planning. But seriously, (laughs) it works. (laughs) I'm living, honestly, I'm proof, my company is proof that it works for an entrepreneur who stepped out on faith, Mm -hmm. who's using a lot of the same tools and techniques. My business is growing, and we've exceeded our strategic goals Right, and so it's time to make new goals. We literally just did this two weeks ago. Wow! To refresh it because we've exceeded our goals. Absolutely. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you. So yeah, this, that's Go ahead. awesome, and that's a blessing. <laughs> it is. It really is. Did you find it hard to make that transition from being in the military where things were a little bit more structured to going into the entrepreneurial space where you still have structure, but as we know, as entrepreneurs, this, there's a lot of grace. <laughs> there's a lot of flexibility. And so the mindset, I mean, even going from corporate to entrepreneurship is a mindset shift. Absolutely. How were you able to make that, that change or that shift into the entrepreneurial space? That's a, that's an excellent question. So it took a little it took a little bit of adjustment. Excuse me, because I would say the biggest adjustment for me was the structure of having to come into work at a certain time. 
and mm-hmm. pulling your eight hours. That would have been, to me, the hardest adjustment. What helped me is because I do understand, I think structurally, and I think organizationally, right? I think like that, and so I was able to come in and kind of build some of that in a in a small startup company where I could, right? And then right. Where, where I couldn't, it was just ad hoc. And I was okay with ad hoc. It was just a part of the, the growing pains, right? Mm-hmm. So I would say the change, and, and it probably helps Coach T that I have a change management degree, so I know that change is inevitable. And so mm-hmm. just how do you manage through the change, you know, until, okay, here's my current state. My future state is I want to have a successful business. So these are just the steps that I have to go through. They're probably not as pretty or as efficient as they need to be. Right. right. But knowing where you want to end up, having that roadmap allows you to fall, get back up, right? Mm-hmm. Pivot a little bit, say, up, oh, that doesn't work. Let me shift it a little bit. But knowing that eventually I'm going to get to where I'm headed, where I put on paper I'm going to be. So, I, and I'll, also I would say being flexible enough to pivot when you need to. A plan is just that, a plan. You can mm-hmm. erase it, and you can put something else on the paper, right? You can right. just, I'm not going north because it's not there, it's south. Okay. Be flexible <laughs> enough that you can pivot when you need to. I like so that. that. Mm-hmm. That's going to help me. Yeah, I like Absolutely. that. Being flexible enough to pivot when you need to. So that is a, that yeah. is a great uh, leadership lesson. Lisa, it's important for our next generation of leaders to not only hear about our successes, but also to hear about some of our mistakes that we've made. So can you share with the listeners some of your mistakes and learning lessons that you gained from them? Absolutely. So um, I'm a little more risk adverse, which is very (laughs) not entrepreneurial in nature, right? <laughs> Most entrepreneurs are really uh, risk takers, right? They're aggressive mm-hmm. when it comes to, you know, taking the heel. So I'm a little more risk adverse, which probably explains why it took me 20 years to become an entrepreneur. <laughs> because I wanted to make sure, okay, am I confident? Is it mm-hmm. going to be okay? Lots of prayer, right? But I would say one of the things, and I wouldn't necessarily call it a mistake, but if I had to do it a little different, I would say my exit strategy, leaving civil service, going into being a business owner, I would say I probably would have given it a little more time. And so I say that I started the business in 2015, but I kind of still worked my full-time job, right? I didn't necessarily take it seriously. I may have did a logo and put it back on the shelf, you know, just kind of a pet mm-hmm. project. <laughs> and then there was a there was a point where I was like, you know, I'm getting to a point now where I'm excited about IMS and I'm getting a little more excited about IMS than I am about, you know, serving in this capacity within my full-time job. Mm-hmm. And so I said, now it was with deep prayer, so I wouldn't call it a mistake. That's why I said I wouldn't call it a mistake. But if I would have used some of the tools that I talk about now with a strategic plan, I would have given myself a little more time sitting in my full-time job before I left. So I resigned and left in 30 days. Nothing said, nobody said, no policy said you only have 30 days. I did that, right? But that was under deep right. prayer and things of that sort. But I could have easily said, okay, six months. Give myself six months, right? I'm going to save mm-hmm. a lot of more money over these next six months. I'm going to make sure the family is prepared for mommy to be at home, right? All of that. Right. We took mm-hmm. our whole family went through this change together. They were like, hold on. <laughs> In 30 days, you're not going to have a job? Let's wait. Um, <laughs> you can imagine those people's skills came in handy. They're like, hey, evidently you're not a really good listener in the household because you would have known that we don't need you to quit your job right now. So, right. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, stepped out of faith. So I would say if I could if I could have done anything different, right, it would mm-hmm. have been that. Versus having 30 days, I would have set out a plan. And even if I would have given myself 90 days, right, put in the letter of resignation, I'm going to leave in 90 days, you know, or what have you. I would just say get, I would have given myself just a little more time 
to build up the structure of IMS while having income, right? Right. And those those types of things. And so so if I had to do it any different, that's what I that's what I would change a little bit. I would think a little more strategic on my exit, my exit path. Mm-hmm. But it served me yeah. well, like you know. Mm-hmm. But it probably didn't have to be as rough the first twelve to fifteen months had I taken a little more time on the front end. Right. Got it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That makes Absolutely. perfect sense. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've seen it and heard it done. You know, both ways, plan yes. and then jump. Or just jump, you know. Sometimes <laughs> right. the situation, sometimes depending on the situation, you just got to jump. <laughs> uh, right. You know, and other times, it, you know, you have a little bit more time to Absolutely. plan. Absolutely. Mhm. And and I think a little bit of that was okay. I don't want doubt to creep in, you know, because right. after you sit for so long, you're mm-hmm. like, well, maybe this isn't so bad. Maybe I can do both. So I was a little, mm-hmm. I, was, I was leery about that, sitting there too long that doubt would creep in and I would change my mind. But mm-hmm. if you know, if you take the time and build a no kidding strategy and a plan, right, unless something devastating happens where you have to stay on your full-time job, you know, something happens with the family. Other than that, you kind of stick to the plan. So Right. Mm-hmm. And make, that Absolutely. makes perfect sense. That makes perfect mm-hmm. sense. A, a lot mm-hmm. of times, and it's interesting, you know, when people, you know, hear that others are in the entrepreneurial space. I, usually for me, I always get that, like, you're so brave. And, and I think I about that. it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think about it. I'm like, well, you know, those that came before us, when I think about my, my great-grandparents and grandparents, well, everybody was in the entrepreneur space. <laughs> right. That's what they did. <laughs> they weren't working corporate jobs. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It seems, seems like at some point we have gotten a little bit afraid of, you know, going outside of, you know, what's traditional. You know, then traditional was entrepreneurship, you know, or the next thing was military. Now it's like corporate. And so when you do those things that are outside of what is now the norm, the norm now is corporate, now you're doing the entrepreneurship, it's like, wow, you really brave. And it's like (laughs) – I don't know. History repeats itself, I guess. (laughs) And it does, right? Because now this is uh, the entrepreneur space is where it's happening. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, I just sat through maybe about a month ago, we had a guest speaker at one of our networking sessions, and his name is Dr. Pickard. He's out of Detroit, Michigan, and he's a multimillionaire. Um, He has his hands in so many different businesses in the city of Detroit, right? But he came to speak to us, African-American man, and he just said he wanted to share some of his pearls of wisdom. And what he left us with, he said, back in my day, there was no such thing as running into someone who didn't have two jobs. So he said, we are in a two-arm economic society, and, and young men and women, you need to remember that. So it's okay if you work a traditional job that pays the bills, that keeps the lights Mm -hmm. on, that keeps the kids fed, right? Mm -hmm. But you have to enter into the American way. You have to figure out how capitalism works. You have to figure out how to run a side business. He said even if it's Mary Kay, even if it's selling Avon, you Mm -hmm. have to understand how economics work and how America works. If not, if you only work a traditional nine to five, you'll never understand what's happening around you in the business world, right? How money moves, how you make profit, how you take losses, right? How you right. make so, – so it was excellent. I mean, I, and that has stuck with me. So, you know, there's no such thing. You're in a two-armed society. You have two arms. You need to keep a side, and he didn't call it a side hustle, but, you know, in the blogs and everything now, that's kind of right. what they call it. But, right, but you have to right. do something, right? So absolutely. Right. Make your money work for you. That's what he was basically getting in the game. 
That's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. Get in the game. That's absolutely true. I mean, whether mm-hmm. you call it a hustle, a side business, an investment right. opportunity, you exactly. have to have more than one stream of revenue. I mean, because you just don't, you never know. And, and I absolutely. tell people all the time, you know, growing up in Dayton, and mm-hmm. I've, you know, been on this planet for 38 years, and never <laughs> in a million years would I would have thought, we would have closed two major hospitals and a major manufacturing facility plant in one small city in my lifetime. Right, right. The GM plant. And now, all oh, right, I didn't think about that. And so, you know, it used to be, you know, things were for certain. You know, you, you, who would have thought they would have closed down the hospital? I mean, they closed St. Saint, Saint e, they closed the Good Samaritan. And General mm-hmm. Motors, I mean, that was a huge, you know, blow to the to the Dayton community at the time that those places closed. And who would have thought, you know, who would have thought that? Like, I'm in healthcare. Right. Hey, That's true. That's true. Two main hospitals. Two, two mm-hmm. main hospitals. So that, you know, that just goes back to that notion of, you know, of you needing, you know, you are in a two-armed society. If all you did was work at Good Samaritan and they closed and you have nothing else Mm -hmm. coming in, you know, then Mm -hmm. you're like stuck. Absolutely. You're hitting the reset button versus let me pivot. Let me put a little more time into my Avon business, right? Or whatever that is. Right, right. (laughs) Or flipping properties or whatever that that side job is. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. That is absolutely valuable. You are absolutely Mm -hmm. right. That was great Mm -hmm. advice. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, I love sharing what I learned, you know. I love it. So as we speak about advice, what advice would you give an emerging leader who may be looking for leadership opportunities and ways to fill their professional toolbox? So as, you know, like I work with young people, and I know that you probably do or, or talk to people, and they're like, man, I'm not in the leadership and sometimes they equate leadership to supervisory or managerial role, I can't mm-hmm. get leadership skills. So okay. how would you suggest that emerging leader think about leadership skills in a different way than just getting them, you know, in their particular role? Absolutely. So I would say look around for opportunities outside of even the job, right? So say, for instance, you're an entry-level worker. There's always side projects coming down the pike, right? You can always Mm -hmm. talk to your supervisor and say, hey, I'm looking for leadership. That's the first thing. Make it known. Make Mm -hmm. it known. If you ask, you'll never receive, right? Mm -hmm. If you never make it known, people don't know how to help you. So you have to open your mouth. That's the first thing. Make it known um, that, hey, as you get special projects, I'd love to take those on, right? And I'd love for you to trust me to take on even a small project, right? Because mm-hmm. what leader, think about you're a leader now, right? Mm-hmm. How does that, how would that make you feel to see an up and coming scientist, right? Brand new to the organization mm-hmm. to say, hey, you have any special projects that I can take off your plate? You I let, say, me, let me show because, you. Oh my goodness! <laughs> right? You are like the Lord answered my prayer. Like He heard me last night, right? So <laughs> honestly, so just imagine now that we're in those shoes. Imagine how much value that person is going to add to you as the leader of the organization and the organization and their team as a whole, right? So there's no reason why you can't take on extra projects. There. What leader wouldn't give you a special project? Okay, Mm -hmm. that's the first thing. So look within your organization first. If the opportunity doesn't exist, you always have outside organizations. And so that could be something in your church, right? I want to take on a leadership position within my church. I want to take a leadership position with a professional organization. So another opportunity, any professional organization you join, a lot of them anyway, they're looking for people because it's the 80-20 rule, right? Almost with everything, right. 20% of the people do 80% of the work. And so you come in as a new member of the, of the professional organization, and you're saying, hey, guys, 
I'm ready to take on a leadership role. Here are my strengths. I'm really good at finances. I can help balance the books. They're like, you want to be the next treasurer? Right? They're like, <laughs> right? So, so there, there's leadership opportunities all around us. It's just a matter of knowing what you want, having that roadmap, knowing where you're headed, and being able to communicate to the people who can help you to say, this is what I would like to do. I always talk, here's another coin phrase that I use. It's not mine. I haven't coined it, but I live by it. How can I add value, right? Mm -hmm. Us as a company, how can we add value? Figure out what the customer or the leader values, and you figure out how you add value to them, right? So if they value their time at home with their family, how can you help them take something off of their plate, right, so that they can spend more time at home with their family? And guess what? You're going to learn leadership skills automatically, just being up under that leader. And so, so seek out, seek out projects that are outside the scope of your job. You have to go above and beyond than your job description, right? That's the key, honestly. If I just did what my job description said, I would never be where I am right now. Never. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's, that's what I would say. Seek out opportunities outside of just what the job calls for and make it known. Make it known to whoever you can talk to. Hey, I'm looking for leadership right. opportunities. <laughs> hey, what can I take off your plate? Right? You got to be careful, right. though, because then you, your plate will get super full if you're not careful. But Right. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be looking for the next person to pass on some of those, <laughs> those special projects, too. But absolutely. So so as as we think about that, is in a time where we're asked to do more, serve more, give more, be the Ooh. best, and the list goes <laughs> on and on, <laughs> One's core values can be compromised in the process of trying to elevate career and position in the workplace. So what advice, because this is something that come up, especially with women leaders all the time. Oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. What, advice, yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> what advice would you give to our listeners who are struggling to balance career, maintain home life harmony, while maintaining a sense of self? Because Sometimes you can do career, and and that's what you're doing, career, and then something else kind of suffers. Or, you know, how do you keep all the balls in the air, or or what do you do? What are are your Mm -hmm. strategies? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So, So the first thing would be, I have always believed in the, uh, the old adage, it takes a village. Mm-hmm. And so when I, when I tell you that I rely heavily, emphasis on heavily, Coach T, I rely mm-hmm. heavily on my village, right? So I have a loving spouse who's also an entrepreneur. And so mm-hmm. I tap into him every chance I get, right, just from a – okay, what did you do when you were in this space, right? What Mm -hmm. would you do if you were in this situation? So having that support has been extremely, extremely beneficial. My mom, so she comes in every other week and she helps with, you know, some of the household, not chores, right, but just managing the household because she understands as an entrepreneur, I am super busy. I work long hours now. Before Mm -hmm. in the Air Force, I worked eight hours, nine hours, you know, I would punch out and I'd come home. Now it's like 15-hour days. Right. And so she comes in and she helps, right? She helps. She's the eyes and ears in the household when I'm not here, making sure the kids get picked up. So I have three beautiful children, right? And so Mm -hmm. knowing that it takes a village. I have family members, aunts, cousins. I mean, they're honestly, when I tell you I rely heavily, if I find out, remember I told you that strength finders, Mm-hmm. Once I know your strengths and you're in my family, <laughs> I leverage it. Oh, you like to cook? Sure. Come on over. So mm-hmm. those types of things. So I, I rely heavily on my village. And then also I try to surround myself with good people, right? So I try to surround myself with good people is a prayer of mine. You know, Lord, surround me with good people. Let pe- good people come into my life. So things of that sort. And I'm not necessarily relying heavily on them in the household, but, hey, Coach T, what are your thoughts about this? Right? I mm-hmm. think I think I even 
tapped into you like not too not too long ago, maybe a month after you you kind of gave me some some tips, right? Wisdom mm-hmm. tips pearls of wisdom. And I think I circle back and say, hey, Coach T, okay, I got this opportunity. How would you approach this? Right? Mm-hmm. So once I know <laughs> that you're, you know, you're a good person and I know your strengths, I'm like, okay, perfect. Because I want that same respect, right? I want the same, I, I offer the same type of time to my village. Hey, if you need me, I'm there. If you need to call and talk, get some advice, strategies, you know, you need help figuring out a, a road map, you know, you want to lean out some processes, whatever it is, let me think through your problem. I'm there. I make myself available. And so that would be very important. So relying on having, first of all, having a village and then not being afraid to ask for help, mm-hmm. right? Again, make it known. Once you know what you need, Make it known. Nobody reads minds. Everybody's busy. If you ask not, <laughs> right? You have not because right. you ask me. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I'm always prayerful and I'm always asking. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That, that so. makes perfect sense. <laughs> what what role, if any, has having a coach or mentor in your life uh, done for you personally or professionally? Oh, having a mentor is is critical. It it's crucial. So I've had a few mentors throughout my career, but having someone who you trust, right, to be vulnerable mm-hmm. with, to say, hey, here's what I'm working through. Here's what I'm thinking. What advice would you give me? And being able to trust that what they're giving you is for your good, right? That they have your best interest in mind. So having a mentor can also, it it can't necessarily shorten the process, right? Mm -hmm. Because I always talk about trust the process, right? Right. But it helps you trust the process that much more. That's what I think a mentor does, right? They can right. help you. They they let you know that if you do A, B, C, D, E is going to be next, right? And they're telling mm-hmm. you, I know this because I've experienced it, or I'm going to put you in contact with this person because they've experienced it. And so having mentors has been, I can't even, I can't even explain how much mentors. So I do want to give a shout out to some of my mentors. So I told you I was in the military. So, and a lot of them are women. So the first one would be Colonel Colleen Ryan. One, because she was the first woman commander of Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. So remember we said it's a little city. She was the first Mm -hmm. female commander. So after her, I would say it was Colonel Amanda. Back then she was Gladney. She was the first African-American woman of Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, right? So she was the first one. Yes, Colonel Colleen Ryan was the first woman, so I saw myself in her. Then I saw Colonel Amanda Gladney. I saw myself even more in her, right? And then Mm -hmm. Colonel Cassie Barlow came after Colonel Gladney. And so it was during this time where they were – there were, it was a recession going on. They were riffing people, you know, in the, in the civil service. There was a lot of change going on. And when I tell you these ladies managed that thing, that turmoil, people were in angst. They didn't know if they were going to have to move jobs or move to another city, right? And they managed that with ease and great. Now, it wasn't easy, but they made it look easy. Right, and so I was right. fortunate enough to work closely with them and watch their different leadership styles and see how they approach those situations. All different, right? Because they're all different leaders, they have mm-hmm. all different strengths, but they rocked it. And I was like, I was young enough to say, okay, if they can do it, I can do it. And those ladies are still a critical part of my network, right? All of them. And I just admire them. I appreciate them. And then we have, uh, you know, some of the gentlemen who I've worked with. So Chief Retired Dan France, he's still at the Air Force Base, but he was the first leader that I heard say, keep it simple. So the KISS rule, K-I-S-S, keep uh-huh. it simple, stupid. He didn't say stupid, <laughs> right? But he's just like, right. keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. So he balanced things out. But I've had some great 
mentors I cannot thank. And there's so many more, Coach T, honestly. Chief McDaniels. I mean, there's so there's so many. I have come in the entrepreneur space now, right, because now I'm mm-hmm. an entrepreneur. And what it took to be a colonel in the Air Force is different as a CEO of a company, right, where people are eating off of you. If you make a wrong decision, you might have to let some people go, right? So right. that's a whole different level of responsibility. And so I have leaders. Uh, CEOs that are my mentors in that space as well, and so I'm just I'm just thankful. I'm grateful. I really am. That's always a good thing where you can have some trailblazers on your path or good people on your path to really steer you in the right direction. So that's awesome. And hopefully they're listening. If not, I'll make sure you have the replay so that you can share (laughs) with them the impact that they had on your life because that's important too. We touch so many, but we don't always know you know, who we are touching. So that's awesome that, that you. Absolutely, that we value it. So some of the ladies mm-hmm. that I work with in the women in defense, so like Ann Hurley, right, she has she runs LDSS, a defense contracting company, which we're a defense contractor now, right? That's the space mm-hmm. we're in. So I rely heavily on Ann. I rely heavily on caller T-Mac, but the name of her company is Macologic. So, I mean, it's just, just really just having a village, right, and being a part of those professional organizations where you meet good people and they're willing to help you get to the next level. And then you do the same thing. You pay it forward. And so that's what right. I try to do. I try to pay it forward because people have invested their time, their talent, and their treasure, right, Absolutely. in me. Absolutely. so I return the favor. So. Absolutely. So, Lisa, how can our listeners stay connected with you and support you in your efforts? How can they keep in contact with you? So absolutely. So we are on, um, of course, I'm on LinkedIn. So it's Lisa Coker, and, and we're the owner of IMS. But also one thing I want to shout out, um, we're on Facebook as well, Lisa Coker. I'm also there as my company, Infinite Management Solutions. So we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on LinkedIn. So all of those social media sites. But one thing I want before we, before we hang up, Coach T, is I want to give a shout out about the Alzheimer's walk. Mm -hmm. So for the walkers, for the people that are in Dayton, Ohio, I am honored to be the honorary chair of the Alzheimer's walk. And so it's a walk to end Alzheimer's raise funds for awareness and advocacy. And um, we're trying to prevent and, and just eliminate this disease. So we're looking for walkers, people to sign up. The walk is October 5th at 830 in the morning at the Dayton Dragons Field. I always call it the Dayton Dragons, the fifth, third field in downtown Dayton. But we're always looking for donations. We're looking for walkers, start a team. And so shout out to Coach T because she has been doing an awesome job with her team. And so we just definitely want people to just reach out. It's ALZ if we want to give out the website, www.alz is an all slash walk and if you if you google that or if you go to that dot org you can get to the walk in Dayton, Ohio, October fifth, Saturday at the fifth third field. And so I've been staying busy with that too, Coach T. That's awesome. So as a recap listeners, the Alzheimer's Walk in Dayton, Ohio, October the fifth at eight thirty at the fifth third field. Some of you may call it the Dragon Stadium. I, I call it call it the Dragon Stadium, but we would love to to see you come out that morning. Those of you who listen know that I'm very passionate about that cause, and that was one of our fundraising efforts for this year. So we'd definitely love to have you to come out and support Lisa being the co-chair of that event this year. So, Lisa, we could probably talk for another hour, but unfortunately, (laughs) our time tonight has come to a close. So, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy, busy schedule to give me the opportunity to interview you. It was definitely an honor and a pleasure to catch up with you, and I felt like we were just two old friends catching up, dropping some (laughs) leadership tips. So, Many blessings to you and and continued success on your journey and your business as it continues to grow uh, with the Alzheimer's Associations, with the walk uh, this fall. So just much success and continued blessings your way. So I definitely appreciate you. you. So much, Coach T. Thanks for having me and thanks for sharing your listeners with me for the last hour. I appreciate you. 
My pleasure, my pleasure. So thank you, listener audience, for tuning in to tonight's show with my special guest, Lisa Coker, where she shared with us, you are in a two-armed society. Remember, having more than one way or more than one revenue stream. How can I add value? Remember to continue to ask yourself that question in different situations. How can I add value? And then what are your strengths? Thinking about active listening skills. Make sure you are actively listening and engaged. Key in on what is being said and also what is not being said because that's critical. Never say no to opportunities and challenges. It's important to challenge yourself. Build great relationships and partnerships. Strategic planning is critical. If you do the strategic planning up front, it will definitely save you time on the back end. Write the vision. Make it plain. Be flexible to pivot when you need to. So don't be so structured that you are not flexible to pivot. It Remember, it takes a village. So surround yourself with good people and don't be afraid to ask for help. Nobody's a mind reader, so they don't know unless you ask. So make it known that you need help or you're looking for an opportunity. If you like what you heard tonight and want to listen to previous shows, subscribe at www.podcast.coachtwilson.com. And please tune in next week to hear from another amazing leader. Until then, have a good evening. Thank you, friends, for tuning in to another episode of Leadership Tidbits with Coach T. Wilson, where Taiwana speaks with leaders who share nuggets of wisdom that you can use in your personal and professional life. Follow her on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Coach T. Wilson. Connect on LinkedIn or visit www.coachtwilson.com. And remember, in life, learn as much as you can, appreciate often, and lead fearlessly.